Welcome back to another episode of Heaven and Healing Podcast. I'm Angela. If you're watching this in real time, the following episode has been recorded as a part of my YouTube maternity leave, which when I return from, I will be live streaming every Wednesday night right here on the channel at 8 p.m. Central Time. So be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Give the video a thumbs up and enjoy the episode. I'll see you all again real soon. All right, so today I am going to be getting into my testimony of how I went from thinking that I was something called a star seed, which I'll elaborate on in a moment, to becoming a born again believer of Jesus Christ. Um, I've shared my testimony in full length across this platform, across several different platforms for interviews and such. So feel free to check that out if you are so led. However, I wanted to just take some time to really hone in on the specific facet of my testimony because it is a highly requested one that I haven't really delved deep into before. And I want to do that now because the more I reflect on what I call the starseed gospel, the more I realize that there may not actually be any other component of New Age spirituality that lends to just the innate desperation that arbitrary spiritualists feel within to actually know the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to explain why that is, but let me just start by sharing my story. So for those of you that don't know, I was engulfed in New Age spirituality for about a decade. It all started when my grandmom died in 2014. She was my best friend in the world, and I just needed to feel connected to her again. I sought out mediums. The mediums led to tarot cards, led to crystals, led to um, my own, you know, psychic giftings, if you will, led to tarot, led to astrology, you know, led to yoga, led to Reiki, led to chakras, led to like one thing after another. The new age is just an absolute domino effect. It's a snowball of spirituality because one thing never works. You always have to jump to the next, you know, something will have what feels like an incredible benefit for the short term. And then eventually, like always, you crash and burn. So you have to find another modality to self heal, to reach enlightenment, to align with your higher self, all these terms that we use in new age, but truly what it is, is just a search for Christ at the end of the day. And I can say that confidently now, having walked with the Lord for over two years, I don't miss where I was one bit. And so I pray that if you came across this video, maybe you're someone that thinks you're a starseed right now, that you would hear me out until the end of this, that you would just approach this with humility, with an open mind, with an open heart, because I believe that if you're here, there's no such thing as a coincidence and that God is using this to minister to your heart. And so I just pray that that soil is fertile to receive the truth. Okay. And then if you're someone that's familiar with this channel, um, I pray that this could be helpful for you. Maybe you were someone like me who used to think you were a star seed caught up in this deception, or maybe you know someone right now a loved one, a friend, a family member that is currently under this deception and you just want to know how you can better pray for them, better understand them, and ultimately best minister to them. So that's kind of why I'm doing this. But, you know, the starseed thing in particular for me came about because, as I already mentioned, I had been trying all these different New Age modalities for years, right? Years. And at the time when I came to accept my identity as a starseed, I was deeply involved already with astrology. I was deeply involved with Reiki and yoga. 
and tarot. Those were probably my main um, modalities within the New Age umbrella. And so this came to be because although I was invested with all of these modalities, as I said, it all works until it doesn't. So there was always sadness. There was always depression. There was always anxiety that no matter how many different things I tried, no matter how spiritually enlightened I got, I could never get happy. I could never get full. I could never get content. I could never get fulfilled. And I never knew quite why, because on the outside, I was doing all the things. I had the rituals. You know, I had the meditations. I had the routine down. I was reading all the books. I was pursuing all the avenues, you know, yoga teacher training, Reiki healing, getting my certification in these areas and thinking that it was my basically mission on earth to help other people self heal. And yet I couldn't even heal myself. No matter how hard I tried. And you know, that's the biggest thing with this new age stuff is that it is so entirely works based. You're always climbing some sort of ladder, trying to achieve your own sense of salvation. And what I felt the Starseed Gospel did for me at the time is actually make sense of the hamster wheel because y'all, that's what it is. The new age is just a hamster wheel. You just go round and round and round and round and round. You don't actually get anywhere, but boy, you're running and you're trapped and you don't even realize it. So, you know, I'm, I'm five, six years deep at this point, still struggling the way I was before I got involved with all the new age practices. Nothing's really getting better in the long run. And, you know, I, I had also lost a lot of weight at the time. I had lost 120 pounds. I was looking good. I was feeling good in the physical as far as my health went. Um, and again, I was doing the yoga. I was doing the tower readings. I was doing the Reiki on myself every day. I had all the crystals. How could I forget the crystals? I had all the crystals. Um, and just still at night when I put my head on the pillow, I knew I wasn't right. I knew I wasn't happy and I didn't know what the answer was. And so there's one particular night where I'm up at three, 4 AM and I start Googling, you know, why do I feel like this? And because I saw everything through the lens of spirituality, I was Googling, why do I feel like this spiritually? You know, um, it wasn't as simple for me as like a mental health thing. I knew it was something deeper. And I really do believe the root of all mental health is something spiritual. So my discernment was on point as far as that goes. But, you know, I needed something more than you're diagnosed with X, Y, Z, because it just felt so insufficient. And truth be told, it was. Because then what? Like, it's just a chemical imbalance or just something hereditary. But I knew it was more. I just knew it was more. And so I'm Googling, why do I feel like this spiritually? Why am I alone? Why am I depressed? Why do I feel out of place? And I come across this word starseed, right? And I just have such a vivid memory of this night where I'm Googling and reading about this for the first time up in the dark, sitting on the floor at this point because my boyfriend at the time was lying in bed next to me asleep and I didn't want to wake him. So I'm sitting on the floor looking this up and yeah, I come across Starseed and it's explaining that you feel alone, you feel isolated, you feel rejected, you feel out of place, homesick even because the truth is you're actually not from here at all. 
So it was validating everything that I had felt. Finally, there was an answer why I felt so out of sorts, why I felt so isolated, why I felt so miserable, why I felt this everlasting sense of just yearning and longing that I could never place my finger on. It was the one thing that made sense to me. It was spot on. Everything that I was reading, it was just spot on. And so what it said was that I wasn't from here, meaning Earth. I was actually incarnated from another star system. The reason I felt so out of place on planet Earth is because, well, simple, planet Earth isn't actually my place at all. I come from a higher dimension, a higher frequency, an entirely different star system. And I've been sent to planet Earth by choice, by the way. I've been sent to planet Earth by choice to ascend the collective, just meaning humanity as a whole, the planet, because at the time, you know, I believed that the planet what I would have said herself, not itself, herself, Mother Nature, of course, Gaia, is alive and she has her own personality and her own wounds and her own frequency. So with the starseed thing, it was that I had been sent here to assist the collective as Gaia moves through basically a portal of ascension into a higher dimension um, because ultimately the belief was, and this is something I subscribed to even before I thought I was a star seed, is that the entire universe is ultimately ascending into a higher frequency, a higher dimension, and all of the universe needs cooperation from itself because I thought of the universe as just one vast body and, you know, if there's one bad cancer cell, it's going to corrupt the rest of the body sort of thing. And so the mindset was, the ideology was that Earth was kind of that bad cancer cell that needed to be taken care of. It needed chemotherapy, basically, from the higher dimensions. And so myself and others like me had come in to be the saviors of that sick little cancer cell called planet Earth in the larger body of the universe to ultimately bring the entirety of the universe back to source, which was always itself, just higher consciousness. That was always the goal. And, you know, I believed that everyone on earth had a responsibility and a duty to shift into their own level of higher consciousness because we're all one ultimately. And so we're all just these fragmented soul parts that's coming back to our our source um so that all being said i'm reading this stuff about how i am in fact a star seed and that's why i've come here because that is the goal i was already aware of it at that point but that was actually my mission now it was my mission that i was actually a higher vibrational multi-dimensional alien that had incarnated on Earth to help save the collective and ultimately bring the whole universe to enlightenment. And so it was explaining that, you know, you feel homesick because you're not home. You feel depressed and anxious because you're not used to the lower frequency of Earth. You feel out of place because you miss your star family. You know, you have problems with relationships, which I always did at the time. You have problems with relationships because you don't know how to interact with the 3D earthlings as a 9D being. And, you know, you feel insecure because you're in this physical body, this physical body when you're used to being essentially a light being. 
made of nothing but frequency and energy. Even the language was to have been telepathic in that sense. There would have been no dialogue as I am speaking to you now. It would have been a telepathic language. Um, so everything was just energy. And so that's why I didn't feel right in my body either. It just had an answer for everything. Everything that I was feeling, the star seed criteria matched it like a 100% ace. And it was so satisfying for me because I realized, wow. Okay. So I'm actually a star seed. So there's a purpose to my suffering. And that's why it was so appealing to me because for the first time there was a purpose to my suffering, right? Oh, I actually came here for a higher calling. And so I have to endure these tribulations. I have to endure the suffering because it's for the sake of everyone else. Like how great am I? I have to suffer through this because it's going to shift me into a higher state of consciousness, which is going to help everyone else shift into a higher state of consciousness because that's my calling as this multidimensional alien light being. It's to help all, all these earthlings that are stuck in their, in their low frequency vibe up, which would ultimately help Mother Earth, aka Gaia, vibe up herself and you know ascend through that portal into a higher dimension and so it, it made sense of my depression it made sense of my isolation my loneliness my anxiety it just made sense of all the things that i hadn't been able to make sense of for honestly my entire life because the reason i got involved with new age was because my grandmom died as i mentioned but even before she passed I had always been depressed. I had been depressed when I was a child, an adolescent, a teenager, a young adult. It was a part of my identity. It's just depression and anxiety. You could not get Angela without having those things there as well. It's really quite sad, but that's who I was. Praise God. Praise God, because when I say that's who I was, I mean it. That is not who I am. And it's all because of him, but we'll get there. Um, the starseed gospel made sense to me, made sense of my suffering. And so it was like for the first time I had really grasped onto something that allowed me to feel like I finally had my head above water because now I could have an explanation for it rather than just this arbitrary state of being and state of healing where I was always grasping at straws, climbing that ladder, as I said, you know, pursuing all these different sorts of modalities, wondering when's it going to finally come to fruition. With the starseed gospel, I realized, well, it may actually never come to fruition in this life, but that's actually okay because it's going to be worth it in the next. Like I'm supposed to suffer. I actually, not only am I supposed to suffer, but the the belief was that I chose the suffering, right? Because I had chosen as a multidimensional, multidimensional alien light being to incarnate in this human form. That was the belief. So it was my choice. The suffering was my choice. And when I started to believe that, it was empowering in a way because it no longer felt like I was a victim. It was more so, wow, I'm actually so strong that I knew I could handle this. I knew that I could handle this and that I had to do this because just Gaia needed me so much and, you know, few were called for it. And then I had a sense of community realizing that there were others like me out there and that I had to find them and that I could find them and that they were going through the same things as me. So it was like the sense of fellowship, the sense of purpose, the sense of salvation, the sense of martyrdom, essentially. The Starseed Gospel gave me what I thought I was looking for. Now, of course I know it was always Jesus. There is a God-shaped hole in all of us. I say this all the time. There's a God-shaped hole in all of us in the shape of a cross. We just 
don't realize that. But I was keenly aware of that void within me. And I thought that the starseed thing was filling that. And so, you know, the whole starseed gospel, it was recommending different ways to maneuver through this human experience as a starseed. And great, it was checking off all the boxes for things I was already doing, right? Yoga and Reiki and chakra work and astrology, because... Astrology was like my niche in New Age. That was my favorite part about it. And um, so realizing that, <sighs> realizing that I was a starseed who chose to incarnate on planet Earth to ascend the collective and that my suffering was purposeful, that my suffering was actually more than purposeful. It was intentional. It was something that I chose made me realize that I chose my birth chart. So all these aspects about my birth chart, about, again, my suffering, my relationships, my depression, my anxiety, my patterns, I had come to the belief that, well, I actually picked my birth chart. I'm the one that chose this divine blueprint for the human experience of my soul in order to ascend and in order to assist this collective with its own ascension. It made me feel seen. It made me feel, for a time, important. It made me feel like I didn't have to die. I didn't want to die anymore, even though I still did. I was seeing it through a different lens now. It wasn't just hopelessness. It was like, I got to do this. It was so, it was a self-savior complex. That's really what the starseed narrative is. It's a self-savior complex. Because the story is you're a multidimensional alien light being that has come to planet Earth to essentially save humanity because you are of such a high frequency, this intergalactic energy that only you and those like you have the ability to raise the vibration of this stagnant, stuck 3D Earth plane and help the collective and Gaia just ascend through that portal that I mentioned into a higher dimension, into a higher frequency. So it's a self-savior thing where you get this mindset of the planet needs me, the earth needs me, these people need me, I need me, and it's honestly really heartbreaking because we're all looking for a savior at the end of the day. We're all looking for a savior. And what the starseed gospel so deceptively illustrates is that, well, you're the one you've been looking for all along. And that's really no different from any other facet of new age, if I'm being honest, because that's what it's all about. It's you're the one that you've been looking for. But tell me, if that were true, why am I still searching, right? Why am I always still searching? Why are you in New Age always still searching? Why are you watching this YouTube video? Because you're searching. You're not the one that you're looking for. Jesus is. And I'll get there. But there are a few more things I want to kind of point out about the starseed gospel itself. Um, from that point in my life, after the first night where I realized that I was this intergalactic alien, mind you, and, you know, hearing myself say that out loud, it sounds, it grieves me, like it sounds silly to say I thought that I was an alien. But when I look back, I just recognize how absolutely desperate I was, how sad I was, how how miserable I was, how on the brink of 
deleting myself that I truly was that I had to believe for a time that I was an alien in order to sustain any sense of sanity, in order to sustain any reason for being, to sustain any reason to hold on another day. It actually got to a point where things were so bad that I believed I was an alien. And you know what's funny about it is that no one around me batted an eye. No one around me batted an eye or wanted to sit down and have a conversation with me about how maybe mentally unstable I was at the time. When I was walking around in an earnest belief that I was an intergalactic alien from a different star system... But you know what's funny is that when I came to Christ, when I was actually born again and washed clean and made new, then people were worried about me. It was never a problem before when I thought that I was an alien, but the the week, the month, the year, when I came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, then people were worried about me. Then my mental health was an issue. Then they were concerned about me having an identity crisis. Then they were concerned about my my mind and my heart and my psychiatric state. When the ironic thing is, is that when I came to Christ, I was more stable than I had ever been. And that remains true to this day. More mentally sound more at peace, more joy. It's truly a joy that surpasses all understanding. It's a peace that makes no sense. And it's because of Christ. Like there is no part of me anymore that is empty. He has filled every part of me. He has brought me to just completion because that's his promise. That's who he is. That's what he does. And he's the only one that can. He is truly the savior of humanity. He came here to reconcile us back to our creator. And so, you know, what's really interesting there is how the entire ideology of the starseed gospel is like a copy and paste, almost exact corruption, counterfeit version of the authentic gospel of Jesus Christ, of what the Bible says to be true. There's many, many similarities. I'm going to go through a couple of them, but the biggest overall is just the the longing for a savior, right? That we all have. That's why we fall for things like this, because we're all desperate for Christ, whether or not we know it. But because... You know, the word says that Satan blinds the minds of unbelievers because as an unbeliever, our mind is blind to who he is. Being up at night at 4 a.m. on Google, reading about the fact that you're a starseed, an intergalactic light being from another planet of a higher frequency, Saying that you're an alien that has come to help the planet somehow is easier to receive than you need Christ. And if that doesn't go to show the just deception of the enemy, of Satan, whose goal is to steal, kill, and destroy everything and everybody... And if it also doesn't go to show just the wickedness, the carnality of the human nature that was so perverted by the fall in the garden, by the the rebellion when sin entered man and put us under the curse of Adam, then I don't know what does. Because on this side of it, now that I have a sound and sober and vigilant mind, it is as crystal clear as you looking at me right now, except probably more so because we're working on the quality with the studio. So cut me some slack, but there, like I said, there's different components of the star seed thing that 
is just a, is just a direct perversion of what the Bible actually says. And, you know, that's the thing about New Age. That's the thing about the devil is that he can't create. He can only corrupt. He can only distort. He steals, he kills, he destroys. He does not make anything new. He only takes what God has created and flips it upside down for his own demented, prideful, rebellious, evil purposes. He's a wicked enemy. He is a wicked enemy. And so he's going to present things to someone who was as lost as I was. He's going to gift wrap it. And he's going to tie a bow of truth around it. But as soon as you unwrap the quote unquote gift, it's nothing but lies underneath. But because you saw the truth that it was wrapped in, you're sold out. You're sold out. And that's where I was. Until I got born again, I sincerely believed this, guys, that I was an alien. And if you're listening and that's you right now, I don't mean any disrespect to you at all. I want you to know that I completely empathize and and completely understand your mindset. And I know that it sounds good. I know that it feels good. Trust me, I know that it feels good. Oh, this is why I'm so empathic. This is why I have giftings, right? Psychic ability. And maybe, maybe you can even read minds. Maybe you commune with spirit. It's because you're an alien, right? Maybe you even are in touch with the Galactic Federation. Or you have access to the Pleiadian Council. That's where I was from, by the way, the Pleiades. And I know there's so many. There's Lumerians and Syrians and maybe you're from Orion, right? But if you're listening and you're thinking to yourself, well, I know I'm a starseed because X, Y, Z, because of the giftings, because I've had these things validated through me. The universe has showed me these signs. I want you to hear me when I tell you that the enemy is a master of deception. The word of God says that the adversary who is Satan prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities of darkness and wickedness in high places. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is a spiritual war. And maybe there's a part of you that's already discerned to that because I was, because the truth is to one extent or another, we all are because we are created by the Lord himself who has already laid out all of this for us in his word that you probably reject right now if you think you're a starseed because I did because that's all the enemy wants is for us to not actually embody the full truth so yeah he's going to convince you the the bible is nonsense right the bible is nonsense the most historically archaeologically consistent book, consistent documentation in all of history is unreliable. And yet your Google search at 3 a.m. that says you're an alien from an intergalactic dimension. Oh, that must be right. That's how the enemy works. He is crafty and he tricks your mind. He is like a ringleader. And the new age is just his big circus um, and he just has you swinging from one trapeze to the next that's what he had me doing and the starseed thing was one of my favorite to swing on I'm not gonna lie because like I said it gave me a sense of purpose and so if that's you I get it I get that you feel like you have a purpose now but I want you to know that you were made in the image of God and your purpose is to be his you are not the savior of humanity Christ is. And so there's the first perversion, foremost, probably biggest of all, right? Is that, oh, you've incarnated. You are this higher dimensional intergalactic being who has carnated as just a mere human 
on a soul mission to ascend the collective, to essentially save humanity, right? But what is the true gospel? It's that God himself manifested as a human being to save humanity. So you see how when we fall for something like the starseed gospel, it's telling on ourselves, right? It's telling on ourselves in the, in the reality that we know that story is true. It's just that the devil has perverted it and made it about us as an alien that's incarnated on earth to ascend the collective when the reality is that God manifested in flesh to become the son of man, Jesus Christ, and die for your transgressions so that you could be reconciled to a perfectly holy God. That's the reality. But the devil has made it your mission, your soul path, your responsibility, you're your own savior, and you're also the savior of the world. So what need would you have for this outsider? What need would you have for this Jesus guy if you yourself are the savior of humanity and of the greater conscious collective of the universe all moving back to source? Because you see, like I said, it's the same exact story. It's all about reconciliation to the one. In new age lingo, it's source, it's the universe, because the perverted idea is that we are all source. We are all one. But the truth is that we are to be reconciled as creation to our creator, who is God Almighty, who exists outside of time and space. He is not, he is not interchangeable with the universe. He created it. Okay. And so, yeah, it's about reconciliation to him. And then the star seed gospel says it's reconciliation back to self, which is ultimately everything. Just higher frequency. It's a lie, y'all. It's a lie. And when I came to know Christ in December, 2021, I laid this all down, right? I, the crystals, the tarot, the yoga, the astrology, all of it. And I came to this revelation that everything that I had believed about the starseed narrative was just such an evil lie from the devil to keep me away from my creator, to keep me in bondage to my own iniquity because that would have ultimately led me to hell. And I know that sounds extreme, but that's the truth. That's the reality. You know, the gospel can sound offensive sometimes, but it's always better to be offended all the way to heaven than it is to be pacified to hell. It's better to be offended by the truth than it is to be coddled by a lie that is only going to lead you further and further down a broad road of destruction that will ultimately result in a second death for you. And I don't want that for you. And whoever sent you this video doesn't want that for you. They want you to know who you are. You're someone that Jesus loves and had in mind on the cross when he stretched out his arms and bled for you, died for you, was whipped beyond, whipped and beaten beyond physical comprehension. He looked nothing like himself as he was whipped and beaten and spat on for you. So you are someone that is actually so radically loved by the King of Kings, the Savior of humanity, Lord of Lords, the creator of all. And the devil hates you so much that he wants you to believe that your suffering was your choice so that you could save the planet. 
He doesn't want you to be saved. He wants you to get stuck in this works-based savior consciousness where you're always the one in the driver's seat instead of you having this freedom of truly surrendering it all to Christ. So another facet with this starseed gospel is this idea of new earth, right? Because as I've mentioned several times, the whole mindset within the new age community is that earth herself, Gaia, is evolving, is ascending, is going through a portal into a higher dimension, moving from 3D to 5D to eventually 9D, all these things, all these stories, and that there's a new earth being birthed as we speak. And that's why, you know, things are kind of so messed up right now because it's those birthing pains. Y'all, this is a direct perversion of what the Bible says. Yeah, we're actually going through birthing pains on planet Earth because there is a new earth coming. And guess what? It is highlighted all throughout the book of Revelation what that means. New earth is not coming from all these light workers incarnating here on planet Earth to ascend the collective that's going to bring about heaven on earth through our own works and our own design and our own soul mission. No, not at all. God has a plan. He's had a plan since he said, let there be light. He's had a plan and the new earth is coming. And the thing is, my cats are doing something. Have you heard that? A new earth is coming. And the thing is, all these poor people that are so under this deception of the starseed gospel, just new age in general, all these beliefs, Buddhism, Hinduism, all of these things, new age is a big umbrella and lots of things fall underneath it, right? The reality is, is that when the new earth comes, they're not going to be experiencing the thrill of that, the joy of that, the peace of that. They're going to be experiencing the torment. So you have it in your head. You're here to create a new earth. And the devil is so wicked that the sad part is he has you convinced of that very thing that you're assisting the new earth when the truth is you're not going to have any parts of it. You're not going to have any parts of it and it's going to be too late. And I don't say that to scare you, to force Christianity down your throat. I'm telling you because it's true and because I've been where you are. I've been there. I know how enticing this all is. I know how seductive it is to believe these things. I know how seductive it is to think that you're an alien because it makes you different, right? It makes you different. It elevates you above the crowd. It gives you a sense of purpose, of belonging, of importance. But that's the enemy simply indulging your flesh so that you remain in bondage to your flesh. When what Jesus came to do was actually, he didn't just come to change you. He came to make you brand new. He didn't come to indulge your flesh. He came to mortify your flesh so that you can actually walk in the freedom of his spirit. Jesus's plan for you is a lot better than the devil's, okay? So this new earth idea within the new ages and the starseed thing, it's, it's a corruption of what revelation talks about the new earth to be. But again, like the, the allure to that, that, that idea that, oh, everything is ascending. It's all going up, 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 like a new earth, higher frequencies, higher dimensions, you know, higher vibrations, better, better, better. No more of this stagnancy of earth, like that allure 
is it's biblical it speaks to the truth of what the bible says we all want god we know somewhere deep within us that we're all made in his image but until we are made his by a spirit of adoption to become a child of god to be his child we're only his creation and so we're going to keep longing for that reconciliation back to our creator and we're going to find all these different fairy tales like the starseed gospel to keep us satisfied in the meantime until one day it's going to be too late but yeah, what I mean is just, you know, I'm going to go on another tangent, but just this, this idea of craving a new earth. It's because we all actually know what's coming. We all actually know what's coming somewhere deep within us. We know that God's word is true. We know that God's word is true. And there's another, okay, so there's so many facets of truth to the starseed thing. That's just simply a counterfeit of, of, of the authentic truth, right? A facet of truth is not truth. It's just a facet. Like I said, the devil will wrap up a lie using the bow of truth. And that's what the starseed thing is. So, you know, you're craving a new earth. You're craving the sense of, of being saved or of saving, right? And then the whole idea of a council, right? The Pleiadian council, the Orion council, the Lumerian council, that you actually have these higher dimensional beings to report to that are guiding you, that are talking to you, that you have come into agreement with. You know, before you incarnated here on earth, your soul had to come into agreement with the XYZ alien council, galactic federation, whatever in order to make that covenant that this was your trajectory for your earth mission. And so they're guiding the whole experience for you. It's counterfeit Holy Spirit, because when you are refreshed and regenerated and renewed and born again in Christ, he gives you his Holy Spirit and his Holy Spirit is defined as your helper, your comforter, your guide the whole galactic federation lumerian pleiadian council it plays to our innate desire to know his holy spirit to be filled with his holy spirit and now also maybe if you're in the star seed thing maybe you've been given a light language right I used to listen to a couple different podcasts by pretty prominent people in the New Age community that identified as starseeds, and they would speak in another tongue, in a foreign tongue, in what they called light language, in which they believed they were channeling the Pleiades or the Lumerians, whatever it was. For me, it was Pleiades, so that's what I always default to that they were channeling these alien beings to send transmissions to Earth because ultimately it was gonna, uh, what's the goal? Ascend the collective, increase the frequency, right? So the idea was that by downloading this light language and then speaking it out, that they were downloading light codes into whoever was listening light codes now that light language that demonic light language is the corruption the perversion because again satan can only steal kill and destroy he cannot create it is the perversion of the gift of tongues the prayer language that comes only from god you know, you don't need the gift of tongues to have his Holy Spirit. But the Bible says that the gift of tongues is evidence that you have it. 
him, the Holy Spirit. It's not an it, he's a him. And so the light language is demonic tongues. And that's evidence that you're filled with an unholy spirit. Because if you're not in communion with the Holy Spirit, well, there's only one Holy Spirit. And he's only made accessible and available to born-again believers, disciples of Christ Jesus. So every other spirit, every other entity is what 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen 14 would describe as Satan masquerading as an angel of light. It's not really the Palladian council. It's not really the galactic federation. It's not really a spirit guide. It's not really someone from your star family because they don't exist, by the way. It's a demon. And if you have a light language, you have a demon that is speaking through you in demonic tongues, counterfeiting the gift of tongues only made available by the regeneration, the filling of Holy Spirit as a born again believer in Christ. So again, I don't say that to scare you. The truth sets you free. That's what the Bible says. And I'm telling you the truth. So please stick around to the end. We will, I will say a prayer for you. If you're ready to let this all go, stick around for the prayer. And like I said at the beginning, just continue to keep an open mind and an open heart to all of this, right? Um, so yeah, the new earth the demonic tongues, the savior complex, the council, it's all facets of the star seed narrative that are just corruptions of what the gospel actually is. And again, it's designed to keep you in bondage. It's designed to keep you from the true gospel. Because again, we all crave the biblical reality that is laid out before us and the truth within that, that Christ is our savior and we need him and we need to be born again by his spirit and be filled with his Holy Spirit and guided by his Holy Spirit. But the devil just flips it upside down and says, here's this instead. This is going to indulge your flesh. This is going to indulge your pride. This is going to keep you tethered to me, says the enemy. That's what he has to offer you. But Christ has new life for you. And so, you know, the giftings, again, perversion. I understand that giftings, quote unquote, come with the new age. Not just starseed, but other, other components, you know, mediumship. And what we experience in yoga called kundalini and reiki. All these things are counterfeits, people. They are counterfeits of the supernatural power of God. Reiki is a counterfeit of laying on hands. Because when you are a born-again believer of Christ, filled with his Holy Spirit, you are able to lay hands on someone and see healing happen because you are filled with his same Holy Spirit that made the lame walk, made the mute speak, made the blind see. That same spirit lives in you as a born again disciple of Christ. Uh, we already covered the tongues, the light language that you think sets you apart. It's actually so much more beautiful and intimate when it's the real thing because that's called your prayer language. And there are different, you know, aspects biblically of when tongues are used, but primarily it is for the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to intercede for you in prayer. So it's almost like when you don't have the words, you just pray in faith with the Spirit and He prays on your behalf through you 
before God. It is one of the most intimate experiences with the Lord that you can have as a believer is the gift of tongues. And now if you're a Christian watching this, I will say just to save face, it's not evidence of salvation or or proof that you have Holy Spirit, but the word does say it is a sign that you have Holy Spirit if you pray in tongues. But regardless, it's a beautiful, intimate experience with God that the devil has perverted, right? And mediumship, you know, it's it's a it's a demonic prophecy. Whereas with God, there's a gift of prophecy where you gain words of knowledge from Holy Spirit that are ultimately used for the exhortation and the edifying of the body of Christ. And for belief, right? Tongues and prophecy, all these signs for belief. Because if you get a word of knowledge for someone that doesn't know the Lord and you tell that to them, sometimes they're just going to break down and weep because how could you possibly know that? And we know that sounds similar to a medium, right? How could you possibly know that? Well, you're getting it from somewhere, either Holy Spirit or unholy spirit. And if you are not born again by Christ, then I promise you, there's no way around it. You are not in communion with God because Jesus is the only way to the Father and we are saved by grace through faith alone. And faith means having an understanding that what he did on the cross is true, which means coming to the understanding, this heart change belief, that's what faith is, this belief, this agreement that you needed him to do that for you because you recognize, wow, I am a sinner. I'm not a savior, see? So if you're walking around believing you're a savior as a star seed, you don't know God, even if you're deceived into thinking you do. And again, I was there. I thought I knew God. I thought Jesus was actually a member of the Galactic Federation. I thought he was one of the ascended masters that I was channeling information from. But those are demons. Those are demons. It's not God. God is found in scripture. A relationship with God is found by his Holy Spirit. You only get his Holy Spirit through Christ. Christ is the only way. So the whole starseed gospel is foundational on again, that you have come to earth to ascend the collective into a higher state of consciousness that you have come It's just so sad that you have come here to suffer on purpose because it's bringing your frequency up and it's bringing the planet's frequency up and it's bringing the frequency of everything around you up. And it gives you that that false sense of fellowship. There's another counterfeit of the star sea narrative, right? Because you get this moment of, wow, I'm not alone here. There's other light workers, there's other star seeds. And we're all here on the same mission. Wow, you finally suddenly don't feel so alone, right? It's a counterfeit of fellowship that is found in the body of Christ. Because that's what we're called. His body. We are his hands, his feet. We are his limbs. We are his. He is the head. We are the body. There is unity in the body of Christ. There is true fellowship. We are brothers and sisters because we are adopted as children of God. So the whole idea that, well, there's other star seeds here on earth doing the same thing as me. It is a perversion of the fellowship that you seek because you actually long to be a part of the body of Christ because we all long to know Christ. That's what I'm getting at. The whole allure and seduction of 
the star seed counterfeit gospel comes from a deep seated place of truly desiring Christ and surrendering to his sacrifice on the cross for you so that you may be born again. Because there's another component, right? You incarnated as this meek little human. You have to endure this for now. Be in this 3D body because what's going to happen? Eventually, you'll be born back into your 9D body. It's a counterfeit of being born again. It's almost never ending. All the facets of the star sea narrative that just completely pervert what the gospel actually is. And it's so wicked because it all plays so well into that desire that I keep talking about, that that yearning, that God-shaped hole. It plays so well into it. But it's a lie. It's a deception. And if you're sitting there thinking, not me, I'm not deceived. The nature of deception is that you don't realize you are being deceived. I didn't. I thought Christianity was a farce. I thought Christianity was a fallacy. I thought Christianity was this mean, oppressive, patriarchal system that was outdated, that I didn't need, that, oh, maybe there's bits and pieces of it that are true, but it's not all true because I'm not a sinner. I don't need a savior. I am the savior. I'm a star seed. I'm a healer. I'm a light worker. I'm a higher intergalactic space being. I'm an alien. No, no. The reason you feel foreign on this earth is not because you're from another star system. You feel foreign on this earth because you have not received Christ. You have not been adopted as a son or daughter of the Most High God. You feel foreign because you're actually a spiritual orphan. But that's not his will for you. But see, God does not force himself on you. He's a gentleman. It says in the book of Revelation, Jesus knocks at the door. So answer the door because he's knocking right now. If you've made it this far an hour into the video, he's knocking at your heart. And the fact that you're still sitting here consuming this means that your heart's not as hard as you may think it is. The people that tapped out five, ten minutes in, their hearts are, are a little hard right now. But see, the beauty with a hard heart is that eventually it cracks. And what God does with a hardened heart is he waits for that moment for it to split. Because when it splits, when it cracks open is the moment it becomes a heart of flesh. It softens. And those seeds of faith can begin to take root because the soil is now fertile. It doesn't just land in the gravel of a hard heart. It actually begins to take root. And that's what happened for me. And I pray that that's what will happen for you too. And if you're watching and you're praying, that's what's going to happen for someone else in your life. Don't stop praying. I promise you, if God can save me, if Jesus can snatch me out of the darkness and depravity and deception that I was living in, won't he do it? And he can do it for anybody because I was so lost. I was so lost. But he was never lost. You know, sometimes we say like, oh, I found Christ, but he was never lost. Christ found me. I was the one that was lost. It says in the word of God that he leaves the 99 to go after the one. And I was the one he came after. Praise him forever and ever. So... I could go on and on, and I probably will record an episode in the future about the Starseed thing. I have some other ex-New Agers that have a testimony similar to mine that I can think of where we could have a really 
rich conversation on it and just expose the deception of it all. But it was on my heart to do this because it's highly requested, as I said, and it's such a big part of my testimony. And it just goes to show the goodness of his mercy and his grace because I really thought I was an alien, y'all. I really thought I was an alien. And like I said, no one batted an eye. It was okay. It was just me having a phase or whatever. But the second I came to Christ, then I was crazy. But that's biblical. Because it says in the word that the blind leads the blind. So everyone around me was blind too. That's why they couldn't see how lost I actually was. And why the second when I was found, then suddenly it was like all eyes on me. Because I wasn't blind like they were anymore. Hallelujah. So I love you. Whoever sent you this loves you. You're not a star seed. There is no such thing as a star seed. There is no such thing as a star seed. The Galactic Federation isn't real. The Pleiadian Council isn't real. There are no alien light beings on other star systems, in other star systems, in other galaxies, on other planets that are sending souls here to incarnate on Earth to ascend the collective. They're demons. And look, I want to speak to you even if you've had experiences of astral projection because I had, you know, I had experiences in astral projection when I was taken through guided meditations where I thought I was, I thought I was there, you know, I don't know where I was going, but I thought I was back home, quote unquote, home in the Pleiades with my star family. You know, what's really funny about that too is that the first time I astral projected back home to the Pleiades, I met my star father and I had grown up without a father. So it was like I was actually being reconciled to my father. Do you hear where I'm going with that? The enemy is wicked, y'all. I needed to be reconciled to my heavenly father. So I go on this demonic meditative astral projection to my star family and meet a demon masquerading as my light father, welcoming me home into his arms in the Pleiades. And all I had to do was just push through the pain of this human experience, push through the suffering, because eventually I would be born again back into that 9D body and be reunited with my star family and my star father. But look, I just want to tell y'all, you don't have to suffer like that. Your pain is not your purpose. That's something I used to say in New Age is that your pain is your purpose. It's something I subscribed to when I was under the starseed deception. But your pain is not your purpose. Jesus is your purpose. Jesus says, come to me, all those who are weary and laden, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He tells us to cast our anxieties to him, for he cares for us. He tells us that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of peace and of sound mind, which are all things that I have now. Praise God. Hallelujah. But my point in sharing that is the enemy is wicked. He's going to tell you under the star sea narrative that you got to suffer in this 3D life. It's all going to be worth it when you're born again. No, what the Bible tells us is cast your cares to Jesus because he he loves you and his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And when you receive him being saved by grace through faith, you can actually walk in the freedom that he died for. He died for you to have that freedom. He had you in mind on the cross. You. He loves you. The star sea narrative is so wicked. It's just a lie. It's an utter lie. You're not from another planet. You're not from another galaxy. You don't have a family in the stars. You didn't come from the stars. You came from God. He knit you together in your mother's womb. 
He set you apart before the foundations of the earth. He knows you by name. He knows every hair on your head. He made you with a purpose. He made you for his purpose. You don't have to carry the weight of the world. Even intergalactically. It's his to carry on your behalf. And you know, it's so much more than just like the heaven or hell thing. If you don't come to Christ, you're not going to heaven. But maybe you can't comprehend that yet. That whole idea that heaven and hell are real. So I'll just say that if you don't come to Christ, you're going to keep experiencing hell on earth and finding different ways to justify it through all these different modalities of New Age spiritualism that ultimately are going to leave you dry. But Christ is living water. He is living water. You're not a star seed. The star seed gospel is a counterfeit gospel of salvation. You are not responsible for your own salvation. Christ alone bring salvation. So I pray this was a blessing to you. If you're stuck in that right now, I just, my heart goes out to you and I want you to know again that it's not a coincidence you're here. Jesus wanted you to see this video. He loves you. He's trying to reach you. He's knocking at your heart right now. And if you're ready to let that all go, then just pray with me here. Like, Put your head down and just close your eyes and just even repeat after me. Just, Lord, Lord, I'm ready to give it all up. Lord, I don't know what it looks like, but I want to follow you, Jesus. I don't want to do this anymore on my own. So I lay my life before you, Father. I lay it at your feet. I lay it at the cross. I believe you are who you say you are. I believe that you wanted me to watch this video. I believe that you wanted my eyes to be opened to the reality of this starseed deception. And Father, I renounce the starseed gospel. I renounce the starseed gospel. I renounce the, wherever star system you're from, you can say that. I renounce the Pleiades. I renounce the Pleiadian Council. I renounce the Galactic Federation. I repent for this sin. I repent for this doctrine. I repent for this belief system. I repent for this lie. I renounce the light language. I revoke the light language. I revoke the communion with the Federation. I revoke the communion with the council and Lord, I will burn all the books. I will get rid of all of the, I'll get rid of all the all, all the all the supplies, all the crystals that help me commune with the stars. I'll get rid of it all because that's what you got to do. You got to get rid of all of it. You have to get rid of all those crystals that help you communicate with the light beings because they're demons. So just tell them you'll get rid of it all and do it because they're demonic. And so, Father, anyone listening to this that received that prayer, I pray protection over them in Jesus name. I pray, Lord, that you would fill them with your spirit, with your truth, with your love, that right now they would have a revelation of your love, Lord, that they would know that you are who you say you are and that they are who you created them to be in your image. Just tell them right now you want to receive the spirit of adoption and be given the right to be a child of God. If that's really what you want. You got to tell them that. And you have to turn from your ways. You have to turn from what you're doing. You can't have both. You can't have the starseed gospel and have the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have to choose. One is the broad road that leads to destruction. And one is the narrow road that leads to everlasting life. And not just everlasting life. Life right now. He makes you new in an instant. That's who he is. So, Father, I just pray protection over the person listening right now. And I command every demonic spirit that is posing as an alien family or an alien guide. I command them to come 
out of them right now in Jesus name to leave them in Jesus name. And Father, I pray that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit and seal that work that is done, Lord. I break the demonic starseed agenda off of them right now in Jesus mighty name. And Father, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your salvation that is found through your son, Jesus Christ, and him alone. I thank you that he is real, that he loves whoever this is, this person listening that you know because you knit them in the womb, you know every hair on their head, you know their name, you know their story, you know that they are yours. And Father, I pray that they would just truly receive that right now, that understanding, that faith that we are saved by, in your grace, Lord. And I pray that this moment would be a turning point for them, not just now, but eternally in Jesus' name. And Lord, anyone listening to this who has a loved one who is under the deception of the starseed gospel, I pray that their eyes would be opened, that their ears would be opened, that they would have ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to receive the truth. Lord, I pray the courage over this person to continue coming before your throne to petition for their salvation every day because we know by your word that you hear the prayers of the righteous and that it is not your will that anyone should perish. And so, Father, I thank you that this is all true. I thank you that your word is true, that it will never return void. And I pray all these things in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I, I really... I really hope that this was helpful for you. I really hope that if you came into this video thinking you're a star seed, that you're leaving this video knowing it was a lie and that you have been deceived and that God wanted you to see this because he loves you so much that he can't bear another second of your deception. And look, if you're watching this and you know someone who thinks they're a star seed, send them this video, pray about it fast for them and send them this video. Ask them to watch it with an open mind and an open heart because, you know, that's something that they believe in. They believe in leaning in. That's what they're taught under that doctrine. And as you send it to them, you can be praying that, you know, just be praying against the demonic whispers that's going to tell them this stuff is bogus, that it's not real. Just pray for them because they need your prayers the best thing you can do is pray for someone. It's not our job to convince anyone of the gospel. We can share the gospel, but we're never going to talk anyone into it. It's God that facilitates a heart change. It's God that facilitates a heart change. Yeah, we are the hands and feet of Christ, but we don't carry the responsibility or bear the burden of someone changing their minds. We don't bear the burden of someone's faith. We have a responsibility to live like him, to walk like him, to demonstrate the gospel. But we don't have a responsibility to convince anyone of it. But pray, 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 keep praying. My best friend prayed for my salvation for nearly 20 years. And here I am with a platform where I expose the deception of new age and spread the good news of Jesus Christ because he saved me. I promise you, if he saved me, there is no one out of his reach. He's the God of possible. He's the creator of the universe. So don't give up on praying for them. Don't give up on praying for them. As I said before, um, I will do future content, future episodes on the starseed thing and just as always, continue to expose all the wickedness and deception of all these new age modalities. So yeah, thank you for watching and I pray to see you again soon. Jesus loves you. Well, I hope that y'all enjoyed that episode. If you were blessed by it, please do consider partnering with the Heaven and Healing Ministry. There's a QR code up on the screen for your convenience that you can scan to become a monthly partner with us. Or if you just want to sow a one-time seed, there are different options to do so down below in the episode description. Thank you so much for your support. Heaven and Healing is entirely crowdfunded, so it all means so much and it really helps.
Thank you all so much. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to Heaven and Healing Podcast if you haven't already. God bless y'all.